Welcome back to North Wales and a series that will showcase some of the best scenery from mountains to coastlines, through to the area's heritage, stunning hikes and nature at its best. If you've missed the last couple of episodes, I've wandered around Bodmin Gardens in awe of the colours and laced up the hiking shoes to explore a beautiful gorge, pretty village and made it into the hills to find remnants of an old ropeway. In today's episode, I'll undertake the most strenuous hike of the whole trip, but arguably the one with the best scenery and views as a reward for our efforts. It's probably worth my while just pointing out that at the time, I didn't realize that it's pronounced glitters. And so during this video, you will hear me refer to it as gliders. My apologies. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my North Wales adventures. Good morning and welcome to Ogden Cottage here in Snowdonia National Park. Today we are attempting to hike a couple of the gliders, Glider Var and Glider Vac. And we've got here quite a helpful map. So we are here and we're gonna start off by following the purple trail around the lake. We're gonna come up something called Devil's Kitchen, which I've heard is supposed to be quite arduous and a fuck because it's very, very loose and very shale-like. Once we get up, um, up the top of Devil's Kitchen, I think at that point we'll have gained quite a lot of elevation and we're gonna come around the first glider there, second glider there, and I think this part's supposed to be very, very steep, so they recommend that when you're going back down, actually to go slightly longer around, and then we'll loop back to the start where we've parked the car. We barely made a dent on the hike, and already we've come across these slate pieces, which have been carved out to demonstrate what the peaks all look like and very helpfully with the names. So we've got Travan, which is that one over there. We've got Glider Vac, which is, I'm assuming that one straight ahead. And then Glider Four, which is that one over there. And what I really like about it is that it's helpfully letting us know what height we're gonna be hiking up to. So Glider Vore, 1,001 meters. Glider Vac, 994 meters. So in comparison to yesterday, this is going to be like proper big time strenuous hiking. We made it up to Coom Idwal, which I think is how you pronounce it, and it really didn't take much effort or time to get up here from the car park. What's crazy though is that it's only just gone eight o'clock in the morning and it's really quite busy. I think a lot of people have come up and done some wild camping. So we've had a lot of people hiking back counter flow, looking at their backpacks. They've definitely had things like tents and sleeping mats attached to them. And there's a few tents still erected over on the north side of this lake. We're gonna wander around this lake and that cliff face that you can see behind me is what's known as Devil's Kitchen and we're gonna be heading up that. It's called Devil's Kitchen because when it's super misty, the way in which the mist rises up that cliff face is something akin to a really, really steamy hot kitchen. And depending on how you look at it, either the fun has just ended of the really nice, flat, gentle slopes, or the fun is just about to begin. So we are now going up this thing. So 
looking down there, there's definitely a defined path, but the last few steps that we've gone, it feels like we've lost it a little bit. And then you've got this tiny like, gully coming down, which has just completely narrowed the path to next to nothing. But looking back, looking at the map that we've got, definitely feels like this is the right way, even though it seems quite sketchy. exhausted. I've really stopped to admire the view. No, I'm pretty exhausted. I'm not even close to the top. I think there's going to be a lot of rest stops on the way up. much scrambling if you enjoy scrambling you'll love this if you hate scrambling I'd still well clear of this hike because there's been a lot of it managed to come up to what you could see as being the top down at the lake at the top of where the footpath was and I believe that that one over there is pronounced as like Iguarn it's a Y and then G-A-R-N on the screen but we're not going to go up to that one today what we're doing is come around it's going to be this one over here and this is the first of the two gliders that we're going to be heading towards so we we'll just need to make sure that we fork to the left rather than the right and we can keep on going with the trail. But it wasn't quite as bad as maybe what it looks like from the lake. But as I said, when we're coming up, if you don't like scrambling, maybe not the hike for you. <laughs> I've read online that this section of the scree is just horrendous and people described it as three steps forward and you slide one back so you're only getting about 66% results out of the effort that you're putting in but I have to say so far it's not been too bad but I don't know if I'm just speaking too early and it's going to get a lot worse the further up that we go definitely spoke too soon this is really really rough going it's uh it, just every single time that i try and put pressure onto my foot it's just giving away to any soil or any rocks that's underfoot but that said the book that we are following we're actually doing it counter clockwise to how they recommended it uh because for me personally i think i'd far rather be going up on this because if i lose my step i'd rather face plant the mountain than if i was coming down and i lose my step and i fall off the mountain but we've passed some people coming down and they've even said to us oh i'd you know rather you than me i wouldn't want to be going up this but i don't think i want to be coming down this i'm pleased that we're doing a circular and we're going to come down on another side We've made it up to 
to Glider Vor, which when translated into English means the big pile of rocks. And yeah, I would definitely say that we've got some big piles of rocks in the background. They're really quite impressive. I think they've been glacially formed. It has not been an easy trek up here. Um, we just kept on getting lost on the boulder fields after we'd been on that scree. The views are stunning. You've got these views behind me. And then off in the distance, I've got a spectacular views of Snowdonia and even more formation of glacial carved rocks. no other mountain top that I've seen before. The spikes coming off of the rocks look super dangerous but really unique as well. I'm really pleased that this hike is the one that we've picked to do today. It's very impressive, very photogenic and we've had really nice weather for it as well. The cottage and the little car park that we started at this morning. And it's making me realise why I'm so exhausted, even though we're not quite at the halfway point of the hike yet, but we have travelled quite some distance and quite some height. This I don't feel quite so bad now seeing where we've come from as to the state that I'm feeling in right now. <laughs> I managed to make it to the top of Glider Vash and I'm pretty sure we lost the trail. It gave me a few memories of us doing the fiery furnace in Arches National Park back in 2019 where a load of groups had just converged, none of us could find the arrows and I felt like it was exactly the same situation where there's about four or five different groups and we were all just like where is the path and we had to scramble over some pretty precarious boulders and bless there was one party where they had a dog and the dog had been really good up until this point and then just was like no I do not want to do this part of the hike which in fairness I, I don't blame the dog but we've managed to make it up and we're now gonna have a look for that cantilever stone stuffing for lunch now next to the cantilever stone and surprise surprise I've got yet another ham egg and salad sandwich just like yesterday <laughs> After lunch we went up onto the cantilever stone and uh, there were a couple of students at the local University of Bangor who offered to take the photograph for the both of us which was really nice and we got talking to them and they'd mentioned that there were the group from the university who I think are doing the Welsh 3000s that they are like the support vehicle and she's saying oh but my phone's almost dead and we've got one of those chargers so we said oh it's fine you know just take a bit of charge off of our portable charger and um, whilst obviously they were waiting for the phone to charge up they've taken tipped us off on loads and loads of really cool things in the local area that we didn't know about, particularly over on Anglesey. So I think that we might have one day maybe doing a bit of a road trip around Anglesey whilst we're up here. But we're now heading off of Glider... Vor, no not Vor. What was it? Glider? Glider Vach. They are absolutely stunning views still and thankfully the sun is still holding out. The weather forecast has hinted that it was maybe going to cloud over this afternoon but so far it's still holding out which is nice. There is a tree. 
trail that pretty much goes straight down here but anything and everything that I've read has recommended only use that to go up don't try and go down it because it's too steep or too loose on the ground it's just Full disclosure, we are feeling just a little bit lost trying to find the path back down, but we've come to a spot where you've got Trevan in the background and then there's a couple of wild mountain goats just roaming around. We found the path, let's go. So we've come quite a way down the mountain now and when we were up at the top, especially at lunch when we stopped to eat, I was umming and ahhing about putting on my fleece because it had gotten so cold but the more we keep on going down, the warmer it's getting to the point where actually I'm feeling ridiculously hot. I'm regretting not having brought any shorts on this trip because it feels like it's properly summer now. <laughs> Like this point on the trail is the epitome of this entire hike where we go from a perfectly paved trail where you can tell exactly where you're going to a point where you're like where is the trail what has happened to it where do we need to go there's been an awful lot of guesswork I have to confess that I think if the weather was quite bad it was a lot of mist and low cloud I really would not feel confident doing this hike at all I'm very very grateful that we've had beautiful blue skies with enough of a view to be able to at least work out where we're going by just wandering a bit and lucking Most of this hike it was exactly how I was expecting it to be just because of all of the research that I'd done but this waterfall as we are descending very very steeply has been a huge surprise. I don't know if I maybe just gave up by the end I was like yeah the hike sounds good enough I'm interested in doing that and I just never read anything to the end to realise that there was a waterfall but it's a stunning a stunning surprise to be almost ending on. So almost ending. I can see the car park but I think we're still a little way away. <laughs> We made it back to the bottom and there's a shop, so I've got a magnum ice cream. I'm so hot, this is going to be lovely to cool me down.